There are multiple ways to play Kingdom Hearts 1 on your Steam Deck. While I suspect most will just want to run the Epic Game Store version of Kingdom Hearts 1 on the Steam Deck, I think it's a worthy endeavor to try to run the PS3 re-release of Kingdom Hearts 1 on the Steam Deck using RPCS3. I want to see the difference between running the PC version and running the PS3 version via an emulator. The results will surprise you. If you like our content, please enable notifications, like, subscribe, share with your friends, and join our Discord server in the description below. High Tech Low Life is also affiliated with the Steam Deck Discord. Links in the description below. People have been begging to play Kingdom Hearts on PC for the longest time, and now you can. With the additional benefit of being able to play it portably, natively even, and yes, not a cloud version. What was Square thinking when they decided to publish cloud versions of Kingdom Hearts, and on the Switch no less? Before we can talk about actually playing the games, we first have to talk about a bug with the Steam client on Linux. One that a lot of people aren't aware of. A bug from 2017 that still exists on Steam Deck hardware to this day. For whatever reason, when you add a .desktop file to your Steam library as a non-Steam game, it links to the wrong file. And heck, I didn't even know this bug was a thing until we tried playing Kingdom Hearts on the Steam Deck. It's relatively simple to fix. All you have to do is go into that non-Steam game's properties in Steam, and then hit Browse in the shortcut menu, and then reselect the game's .exe file. As you can see here, the file is now properly linked. I think the bug has to do with spaces and folder names, so that's why things get really messed up. Anyways, here's a comparison between the broken and working links. And for the love of god, Valve, please fix this bug. So this is the PC version of Kingdom Hearts 1 Final Mix. This is the original default settings, and it runs pretty well at 60 FPS. But the question is, do you think we could save some more power? It uses about 14.3 watts, and honestly, that's not that great. Especially for a game that came out in the PS2 era. There's this little option here called Refresh Rate. That's more or less V-Sync. As you can see here, the game still runs at 60 FPS, but now it consumes way less power. We actually gained a solid hour and a half of battery life, which if calculated is around a little over four and a half hours of battery life. That's pretty freaking good. Do note that cutscenes are locked to 30 FPS regardless of settings. And just for the heck of it, we tried the PS3 re-release, and as expected, it uses a lot more power than just running the PC version. It's also locked at 30fps by default, so it's not a great experience. Oddly enough, we ran a 60fps mod for Kingdom Hearts on the PS3, and... It uses less power? Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. I don't think anyone was expecting that, really. Oh, and we lost to Riku again. Ugh. Here's something that I didn't even think of that Jade definitely thought of, which was to test suspend functionality. And it seems to be taking a little bit longer, but as you can see here, yeah, we can see why it takes a little bit longer. Because the game doesn't work anymore after being woken up. As you can see here, the game is totally frozen. Even the performance overlay is frozen too. Conversely, if we try the PC version, as you can see here, it still takes a little bit of time to wake up after being put to sleep, but it just works. Like, look, see, the everything's moving as expected. I can definitively say that if you're going to play Kingdom Hearts on the Steam Deck, you should be playing the PC version. I mean, that much was expected, wasn't it? Expect future videos on the rest of the Kingdom Hearts franchise.